Hello, my name is Alexa. I can play music, answer questions, get the news and weather, create to-do lists and much more. Hello and welcome to a Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi into your very own artificially intelligent personal assistant. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have your own voice interactive AI that you'll be able to ask nearly anything you can imagine. To perform this task, we'll be using Amazon's cloud-based voice recognition and information service, Alexa. This essentially turns your Raspberry Pi into an Amazon Echo. For those of you who are unaware, the Amazon Echo is a state-of-the-art, American-only, $180 tube that you can talk to. By using a Raspberry Pi instead of an Echo, you can utilize Amazon's high-tech features in not just America and for a significantly lower price. This is based off of the work of Sam Machin, but I have modified and changed the Python code considerably to work with a much more friendly SenseHat add-on. So your Amazon Echo Pi will have some great visual feedback and be a lot easier to use. Without further ado, here's what you'll need to turn your Raspberry Pi into the ultimate AI. Firstly, you'll of course need a Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial, I'll be using the new Pi 3, but this should be compatible with every single Pi that supports the SenseHat. This includes the B+, A+, Pi 2, 3, and even the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Alexa voice service is cloud-based, and so your Pi will need to be connected to the internet. Also ensure that you have the very latest version of Raspbian installed on your Raspberry Pi, available from raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. Secondly, you'll need an official Raspberry Pi SenseHat. As I've covered in earlier videos, the SenseHat is a great multifunctional Raspberry Pi add-on designed by the foundation that has a whole host of features, including an accelerometer, humidity sensor, etc, etc, etc. Most notably, and what we are interested in, is the joystick on the SenseHat as an input trigger for our artificial intelligence, and also the 64 RGB LEDs for some nice pretty visual feedback. The real Amazon Echo is always listening, and consequently, when you say Alexa, it is triggered and listens to your request. For third-party devices, this activation by voice is not permitted in the terms and conditions, and so for this tutorial, we're going to make the AI listen to us by pressing and holding the joystick of the Sense Hat. Despite being difficult for me to program, I found this to be the easiest and most convenient way of interacting with a Raspberry Pi personal assistant. Find a link to where you can grab a sense hat from in the description below. Next, you'll need a USB microphone input of some kind as the Raspberry Pi does not have one on board and Alexa, of course, responds to voice commands. This can be any USB microphone you like, but I would advise trying to find one that does not require strange drivers and is just plug and play. I shall be using this one from Amazon that cost me around 10 or 15 pounds. You can find links in the description to this microphone and suggested other ones. Alternatively, if you do not have a microphone, then a USB webcam should work as a microphone input too. Linux is quite good at auto-detecting microphones, but if you encounter issues later, then check out the FAQs and troubleshooting section that I've created. Links again can be found below. Finally, Alexa will speak to you, and so you will need to connect your Raspberry Pi to an output speaker of some kind. I would recommend plugging in an external speaker, like this one, into the Pi's 3.5mm audio jack. Most speakers like this are rechargeable, but you can keep them charged by plugging the USB charging cable into one of the Pi's USB ports. My installation code will automatically use the 3.5mm audio output, but this is very easy to change if you are using the HDMI audio on your television, for example. Just take a look at that troubleshooting section below. A 3.5mm speaker can be picked up for around £10 on Amazon. And that is all you need to create your own Raspberry Pi artificially intelligent personal assistant. As you can see, this method is significantly cheaper than Amazon's own offering, with the ability to modify as you wish. Before we get to the software, first you'll need to hook up everything to your Raspberry Pi. Place the Sense Hat onto the GPIO pins and ensure that it is firmly in place. Next, connect your speaker to the 3.5mm audio jack, and finally, plug your USB microphone into one of the Pi's USB ports. Now, power up your Raspberry Pi and log in. Before you set up the stuff on the Raspberry Pi, you'll need to create an Amazon developer's account. I'd recommend doing this on a separate computer and then communicating with your Pi over SSH, 
as later on in the process, you'll need to copy and paste large keys and strings of text. Open up a web browser and navigate to developer.amazon.com. You should be greeted by a page such as this. Now, click on sign in slash make an account and either sign into your Amazon account or quickly create one. During this registration process, you'll need to fill in some basic details about yourself, accept some terms and conditions, and then answer no to both questions asking you whether you are going to monetize anything to do with Amazon. After this, you'll be at the Amazon Developers Console. Next, we're going to click Alexa and then get started with the Alexa voice service. Once here, you'll need to register a product type and do that by clicking this button and make sure you register a device, not an application. You'll then be presented by a further process that looks like this. Now, what are we doing? Here, we're essentially telling Amazon that we're making a new Alexa voice service device. So give that device a name in the type ID, and then you can just duplicate that in the display name. Make sure you pay attention to how you spell and capitalize this name. We will be using it later. I've just called mine Raspberry Pi AI. Now click next. You will need to set up a new security profile for your Alexa voice service device. This contains unique information to you that is probably not the best to share. And also we'll be using this info later on. So here, create a new security profile and give that a name. I would recommend calling it and describing it the same as your Alexa device name. So for me, it is Raspberry Pi AI. Now click next. You should see that things called security profile IDs and client IDs have been generated in this space here. As I mentioned before, these are unique to you and we will be using them when setting up Alexa on the Raspberry Pi. So best to keep this page open. Before you do that, however, you'll just need to modify some of these web settings. So click here and then press edit. Firstly, we will need to change the allowed origins field. So click add another and then type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 5000. After that, click add another again, and here we'll need to put our Pi's IP address. This can be found by going to your Pi and typing if config and hitting enter. Your IP should be listed in the results of that command here. Once you have that, go back to Amazon and in that box, type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash your IP colon 5000. So for example, it might be 192.168.1.205 colon 5000. These settings just tell Amazon that the device at this IP address is allowed to communicate with the Alexa voice service. Before we move on, we'll also need to change the field called allowed return URLs. Do this by clicking add another and then do exactly the same as before, however with one crucial difference. You must add a forward slash code onto the end of these additions. So for the first one, type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 5000 forward slash code. And for the other one, type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash your IP colon 5000 forward slash code. In the end, it should look something like this. Once you've ensured that is correct, click next. Now all you need to do is fill in this miscellaneous information for Amazon. For the category option, just say that it is an other product. Describe it as whatever you've named yours. So for me, it is Raspberry Pi AI. Then finally, just say that your expected timeline for commercialization is to be decided and that you're planning to commercialize just one device. You don't have to worry about any of this process. You're just jumping through hoops so that you can use Amazon's Alexa service. Now that a new device has been created, you should be at the registered product screen. Simply click edit again and then click security profile. This is that unique identification and security information we had earlier. Keep this up because we'll be using this in a second. Now it is time to set up the code on the Raspberry Pi. So ensure that your Pi is on, everything is connected and that you're in the terminal ready to type commands. Firstly, we would need to download all of the code that we will be using. As I mentioned before, I have heavily modified and improved the baseline stuff to work with the Sensat, and you can download all of the software from my GitHub repository with the command git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash the hyphen raspberry hyphen 
pi hyphen guy forward slash artificial hyphen intelligence hyphen pi. If you've missed that command, it's on the screen right now and it will also be in the description below. List the contents of the current directory you're in with the command ls and you should see that a new folder has been created that houses all of the code. Change into this directory with the command cd artificial intelligence pi. If you list this folder's contents, you'll see a wide array of different programs. Before we run Alexa and get our Raspberry Pi personal assistant working, we must first set up the software and install all of the necessary dependencies that the code requires. You can do this very easily with the command sudo dot forward slash setup dot sh and then press enter. At first, this should start to download all of the required packages and take perhaps five minutes. After all of the software is downloaded, the setup process will move to the next stage and require some input. Firstly, it will ask you to enter your product ID. This is what you called your Alexa voice service device, and it is critical that you input this letter for letter with the correct capitalization. So for me, it was Raspberry Pi AI, and then after that, just press enter. Next, you'll have to enter the security profile description. This is the top line of your security profile, but if you followed my recommendation, it should be the same as your product ID. So for me, it is Raspberry Pi AI. The next several prompts require some copy and pasting. Firstly, you'll need to copy and paste this field here, the security profile ID. Input that into the installer when it asks for it. After this, do the same and copy and paste your client ID after the setup file asks for that. Finally, repeat and copy your client secret over to your Pi. This should be the last thing that you need to copy and paste. Once you've done all of that, press enter and you should now see lines of text like this saying that an engine bus has started. For the next stage of the process, go back to your web browser and then simply type your Pi's IP address followed by a colon and 5000, just like this. If everything has gone correctly, you should be greeted by a web page such as this, saying that you need to sign into your product using your Amazon account before you can use it. Do this by just typing your password and hitting enter. Then agree to the terms and conditions given. Finally, a large refresh token should be generated. This is automatically added to the configuration, so you will not need to make a note of it. You can now close the tab and head back to your Pi. Now that the process is finished, you have successfully set up your own Raspberry Pi Personal Assistant AI. You can now exit the setup script by holding Ctrl and C. You'll notice the last stage of that installation script is to set the audio output device as the 3.5mm speaker. As I said before, if you want to use HDMI, check out the FAQ below. After that fairly long and arduous Amazon process, you can now start to talk to your Raspberry Pi in the hope that it will talk back to you. To start Alexa, ensure the Pi is connected to the internet and type python main.py and hit enter. You should see a welcome to Alexa and a confirmation that everything is in order. Then she will say hello to you. Hello. So. How does one use this high-tech personal assistant from the future? Simply go to your Pi and press and hold the small joystick of the Sensat down. You should see that the RGB LEDs burst to life and react to your voice. This tells you that Alexa is listening to your question or query, so be polite and ask her something. Once you've finished your question, just let go of the button. For example, let's ask Alexa, what is the weather going to be like tomorrow? Here's the forecast for tomorrow in Cambridge, United Kingdom. Look for showers, with a high of 60 and a low of 54. You should see a question mark appear on those RGB LEDs. This tells you that Alexa is thinking, and when she's made up her mind on the answer to your question, this will change to an exclamation mark as she serves your request. Overall, Amazon has a very low latency service, and so even the most complex questions will only take a few moments before being answered. For example, who were the presidents when Barack Obama was a teenager? Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford were the US presidents when Barack Obama was a teenager. You can quit your program by holding Ctrl and C, and that will stop your artificial intelligence. I won't delve into the program as it is fairly complex, but essentially what is happening is when you press the button on the sense hat, the loudness of your voice is represented on the RGB matrix, 
and a recording is sent off to Amazon's cloud for voice recognition processing. Once that happens, another recording is sent back from Amazon containing Alexa's answer. This is then relayed to you, the user. This tutorial has had many steps and so congratulations for creating your own Raspberry Pi AI. I have commented all of the code and please do look through the directory to see what is happening and what I've included there. Whilst tricky, this has been a great project to do and I'd like to thank my good friend Simon Beale for his Python expertise. What things are you going to be talking to your Raspberry Pi AI about? Let me know in the comments below. If you are having any issues or getting strange errors, then either check the FAQ of my GitHub, there is a link below, or scan through the code and see if there is a comment there for your particular problem. That's all for today's tutorial, and I hope that you've enjoyed turning your Raspberry Pi into your very own artificially intelligent personal assistant, courtesy of just some Python code and Amazon's cloud service. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and until next time, bye.